Hey makers, nice to be here. Welcome back to another episode. Um, this month is going to be a little bit different. Uh, I thought quite a bit about what I was going to do and ended up landing on May a lot. And it's going to be a little bit different because, excuse me, <clears throat> there's no proper way to do May a lot, um, like proper way. There's no official way, there's no one way to do May a lot. Um, it's a movement that began, oh, I believe in the 60s, I might have to fact check myself, but I believe it like, took off around the 60s, um, and essentially anything that you can send through the post can be made a lot. So I'm going to show you a couple of different things that I've done and ideas. I thought we would maybe make something together, or I would show you what I'm making and, uh... I'll also post a link to a really nice documentary that I watched about it. I found it really inspiring. Um, and you can see like all of the different ways that people make. Um, it's wonderful. One of the things that they were saying as well is that a lot of people have tried to define male art um, and failed because there's always a new way. Someone will always find a new way to like, break out of that definition. So. Yeah, let's, let's just get into it. Essentially, it's ways of sending messages to one another um, or art to one another. I quite like them to send like letters in a more creative way. Um, it's kind of like, I think about it like a care package, but somewhere between a text and a care package if that makes sense. Um, I think it's just such a nice thing to receive through the post. Um, it's obviously, it takes a bit more effort than sending a text, but to know that someone has put that effort in and they've been thinking about you while they've made it, it's a really special thing. Um, so this is, this is one that I've made and it's just corrugated card. And then I've got pictures out of magazines and I've just stuck them on. I'm going to write my message over the top and I will put a little band around it so that it stays closed in the mail. Put a stamp straight on the front and a sticker with the address. And I'm just going to send it like that. I think it's really lovely. Um, this is another one. This is just a page out of my sketchbook. Like I keep a little kind of, a couple little sketchbooks this sort of size where I just doodle and do different things. So take these pages out and then I've backed it on, this was the front of a sketchbook. Um, and I quite like the pattern so I thought I don't want to stick something over the top and cover up this pattern. So I'm going to write my message on tracing paper, stick a label with the address here, and I'll stick this on afterwards. And I will just send that in the post, like a, like a postcard. Um, this one, this is one that took a little bit more time. So on here, I've got I'm going to put the address in here. I'll do a few more doodles and stuff. This is a paint pen and glitter glue. I found some glitter glue in the post office last time I was in there and I've been using it nonstop. I love it. Um, on this side, this is quite, I've seen this done quite a lot, um, cutting out words from magazines and newspapers and stuff to make either a message or a poem. Um, so this little poem is basically just to sort of say, I miss you in a, in a poetic way. Um, again, this one, I'll also, I'll probably just put a couple of elastic bands around it so that it stays closed in the mail. And then when you open it up, it's a bit of collage. Um, this is another, this is a print from my sketchbook, which I just stapled in. I'll write my message under here. And then I've made a little 
pocket with some stickers in. <laughs> this, <laughs> this one's going to my friends who are homeschooling at the moment. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that's quite lovely. I mean, I, I imagine that people keep them. I hope that they, they keep them longer than a postcard. Um, and this one is one that I've just started. I don't know if you can see. So I'm doing one where I circle letters or circle words to make up uh, like a message or a story or a poem. Um, not entirely sure yet until it's finished um but that's fine so like some of these i hope you can kind of see like some of these i have used sort of uh creative skills in terms of drawing or painting and you could use whatever skills that you have but you also don't need to be you don't need to pick up a paintbrush or a pen or anything creative if you don't feel like it or that's not your thing. Um, you can just pick out nice images and write on top of them. So I thought that we would make another one. One of the things I wanted to say as well, also, well, two things. One is you'll see that I've got scissors here, but there's no reason that you need to use sharps or scissors for this project. Um, I've seen people who just fold up a page of a magazine and <laughs> stick a stamp on it and write an address on it and um, send that. And I saw this really lovely one as well. That was the other thing I was going to say. I do quite a lot of collage because I enjoy collage. Um, but... I've seen like people, there was this one girl in that documentary who um, she got a cassette tape and she unrolled all the cassette tape and wrote her message on it and then rolled it back up <clears throat> and filled it with glitter. And she described it as like a little box of magic. And you could see the joy that she had had and how much this object meant to her when then she'd sent it to someone else and the idea of how much joy it brent it brought them um yeah it's just i think it's really lovely thing to do um and you also it doesn't have to be like a mindful activity you can just like Wah! chuck things down and see what happens um so i've got here like these are some words and things that i've cut out of newspapers some old photography paper, like really, really old, like 10 years old, I think. Um, I quite like this image. Uh, I would suggest if you don't have collage materials in your house, um, just start collecting them. Whenever you see a free newspaper or a free magazine, if it's got some nice pictures in it, take them. <laughs> and maybe get a little folder together. This poster has come out of a magazine of some sort. That would be good to work on. Maybe add some funny speech bubbles and stuff. But it's quite big. I'm not going to do that right now. Some more pages from my sketchbook. What else have I got here? Country life. Some, some paper that's left over from a sketchbook all stuck together. Oh, I like this. She's good. Okay, maybe I think I'm gonna use her. <laughs> these are hilarious. These are like people overhearing something weird. We have to paint the ceiling too. I squirted it with breast milk. First off, we need to agree on the surface area of a crumpet. That's, that's fair enough. Um, Alright. I think... I might 
give her a background of lots of flowers and stuff. Bit of a like Frida Kahlo halo of flowers vibe. life uh, flowers. And there's some flowers. Nice. Usually, I'll be honest, I'm not as organized as when I do these filming for the episodes, it just gets a complete mess in my house, but I'm gonna try and keep it fairly organized. Because, you know, it looks better, doesn't it? <laughs> So the first thing to decide is how big I want it. I would not send something this A3 because it's just going to be a pain and it will get all folded in the post. So, rip it in half first. I think I could probably get away with half. Yeah, I think half. I think I want to have most of the typewriter on. I'm just trying to see where I want to position it. I think I want to have most of the typewriter on rather than have her elbow in the mist off over here. But I'm not going to cut it until after I glue it down. Yes, I'm about this. In fact, before I do that, I'm going to stick my flowers down because I want the flowers behind her. I'm going to tear it because um, I like the texture on the edge. Particularly when you're doing, I'm going to like overlay these, I think that. It's quite nice. And I also just want to show you that you don't need to cut everything out like this for it to be, for it to, you know, look nice. Um, yeah, it's perfectly possible to do this, like I said, in hospital or without using 
sharps and scissors. Whether you collage or take apart cassette tapes. If you can find cassette tapes now, that'd be impressive, to be honest. I would love to get a cassette tape. Um, I'm pretty sure, like, we used to have loads. I remember we used to have Harry Potter on cassette tape when I was younger. It was amazing. It was the only thing. I had, like, chronic insomnia. It was the only thing that helped me to sleep, listening to Stephen Fry's voice. <laughs> Right. I'm going to try and find some wood pattern to put at the bottom. I have here, as, <laughs> as well as that massive disorganised pile, I do also have this more organised folder. Um, that I try and keep collage materials in, so I will put all of that big pile in here when I get a chance to organise it. <laughs> um, there's like colours, and then tissue paper and textures. Here is words, places. And I guess this is the start of figures. Uh, do I have any textures in here? I have. Maybe a, maybe a nice old fashioned carpet. Why not? I don't know if there'll be enough of the wood, but I also think the carpet's quite funny. Because because uh, it's not going to go all the way along the bottom, I'm going to take the typewriter right down to the bottom. And then I'm going to put, I'm going to cut it in half. So it looks like a massive rug. Sure you cut it wide enough that was really lucky
too much glue. This is why you should use paper. I will have to give this mat a little bit of a wipe down after. Lovely. And now, my lady. Ra uh, I was going to say, rather than sticking this, glue in the back of this, sorry, I could glue here. Um, but I'm not going to do that because I'm not sure exactly where the edges are. And sometimes when you have to peel up edges to put more glue on and stick them back down, it can mess them up a little bit. So I'm going to glue this instead and just just glue everything down to my to my cutting mat. In. Oh no, you've stuck it in the wrong place. There's a little gap there down at the bottom. I guess the difficulty is now. Sleep. It's all going mad. Third time lucky. I think I might. The problem is now because I can't see the edge of the the paper. It's a bit more of a guessing game as to placement. I've got a little gap down there, but I will live with that or fix that. Um, so I think this is about the right placement. I don't want to pick her up again. You see there's a tiny gap of black there. But that's the kind of thing that only I'll notice. And now all of you, because I've told you, but... <laughs> Shh, don't tell the recipient. Um, so... Now I'm going to cut off, turning it over just so that I can see the, the edge of the paper. I don't really know how I'm going to write a kit list for this episode because it's a very, like I said, free for all activity in terms of how you interpret it like what your skill set is and how you use that to make something and send it to someone it's a i like to use this um like some people just send pictures and just send art but i like to use mail art to send messages like a like a more thoughtful um, text message. Also, I also think as a mad person that this is kind of, there's an element of like reclaiming my um, letterbox with the mail art because the only mail I ever get is bills 
benefits letters um, or once a year I get some birthday cards and like there's no these are not birthday cards there's no rhyme or reason for sending it other than just to say like I'm thinking about you um, and it's, yeah it's really nice to get something nice through my letterbox um, and I, I, I think I hope the people who receive them feel the same way um, one of the other things they were saying on that documentary one of the one of the things someone said was like how many people know their best friend's handwriting nowadays and I was like ah oh, damn that's so true I know <laughs> I could I could tell you the, the mannerisms in text and on WhatsApp. I can tell you like how good their gift game is, but there's something really special about like having a handwritten um, or handmade thing from someone that you care about. So that that was my thinking behind the the mail art project. What do you think? I'm so pleased. <laughs> I think I might do this one like just as another postcard like this. Um, it's a bit. Uh, the the paper is taken on a bit of moisture from the glue, <laughs> picking up and sticking down and picking up and sticking down. Um, so I'm gonna wait for it to dry a little bit, but I think I will stick a stamp on this side and some paper in fact let me let me do this now yeah i think this is going to be like another postcard one I don't really like, I know it's really finickety, but I don't really like that big line at the top. It's just a personal thing. <laughs> it's just personal, go away. <laughs> double check or maybe I'll put a link actually on the episode notes where you can check the size weight uh, like dimensions of what you can send in the post um, with what stamps what go you know what goes through a letterbox um, this will go um, just with a stamp but larger things may require more stamps or you may want to take it to a post office. Um, or for people who don't want to go to a post office right now, you can also, there's like delivery companies who will do door to door deliveries, come pick it up from your house, which is a bit more expensive obviously, but um, we're all stuck inside at the moment, aren't we? It needs must if do what you got to do. Um, and then I'll stick a little piece of paper. In fact, I think I will just use a bit of tape. Um, you will have noticed that 
I haven't written any of my mail art yet. And no offense, but it feels very personal. Like when you go to this much effort to make something for someone and I kind of, I know who's, I've been thinking about um, who's going to get them, each of these mail art pieces. And I've kind of made them or chosen things that I think that they'll like or speak to their character or our relationship, I guess. So it, it feels quite personal and I felt like I should or that I wanted to keep that uh, just between me and the recipient and the, and the postman. <laughs> If I was a postman, I would definitely read people's postcards. <laughs> That's why I'm not, don't worry, I'm not reading anyone's postcards, but I, yeah, I couldn't. I, curiosity would get the better of me. Oh, Marbella. <laughs> So, yeah, I will write their address. <laughs> I also didn't want to accidentally give everyone on the internet my friends' addresses. <laughs> <laughs> they would have been annoyed. But I'll write, I'll write the recipient's address on here. Um, write my little message on here. Um, and there we have it. I hope you liked um, this episode. I, like I said, I've been a bit mad. It's all a bit haphazard <laughs> today, this week, this month, this year. Um, but yeah, I hope I hope you enjoyed it, and I love, love, love to see what you guys make again. Like when you send pictures in, it brings all of us so much joy. So thank you so much, and. Um, yeah, we would, I would love to see, we would love to see um, pictures of your mad mail art. Um, and like I said, don't feel like you have to stick to collage at all. Um, I will post some links where you can find other ideas and look at pictures of other things that people have done. Um, I really truly think that there is mail art for everyone out there. Um, so yeah, I hope you have fun. See you next time. I'm here to introduce the next Mad Makers session, uh, which is being run with uh, Stitching for Change. So hopefully you'll be able to make your own Mad Covid coaster uh, or like, be able to come up with your own design to make something slightly different. Um, so we're offering kits for this one. So if you'd like to get involved, we're actually providing the materials free of charge. So if that is something you would be interested in, then you just have to email madcovid at gmail.com and um, somebody will get back to you. If you could include your address, that would be mint. Uh, and we'll delete all the data afterwards so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but what will, what will you get in your Mad Makers kit? So, yeah, let's start off with... So you'll get some threads, obviously. If you have any specific colours that you want, then feel free to ask and we'll do our best. But we do just have like a limited supply. 
Um, you'll also get a needle, which will be on a little bit of hessian, so it's not just like knocking about. Um, you'll get your coaster, which is comprised of a front and a back that you then sort of just push together with the cross stitch in the middle. You'll get your Ada fabric, which is the fabric that cross stitches use. Uh, you'll get 14 count Ada in this kit. You'll get some graph paper for designing your own pattern if you would prefer to make your own. And you'll get a pre-designed pattern by me, um, which gives a bit more information. So yeah, that's everything you'll need to make your own Mad Covid coaster. Um, any questions, get in touch with madcovid at gmail.com uh, and we'll, we'll do our best to, to help you out. Looking forward to it. See you next month. Bye.